What is going on, guys? What's up? What's up? We in here. How you doing? We have the Pro Chess League Summer Series Week 7 post-game coverage and analysis. Coverage and analysis. So send the games. I got some games that we can already go over from both teams. From all the teams, actually. Pretty fun stuff. The Mumbai Movers versus the Armeni Armenian Eagles, everyone else. What's going on? Thanks for the host. Let's go, guys. Welcome to the stream. Hope you're having a good time. Pro Chess League Summer Series. It just went down, and now we're here for the coverage and analysis. Post-game coverage and analysis. Great job today from the analysis and um and everything that happened. So, pretty awesome. Hello, people. What's going on, Sefer91? I, I saw that you wanted to actually get your games looked at. So, I saw you in the chat over there in chess.com. So, welcome to the stream. First off, what team did you play for? We'll actually look at your game first. We have some games already pre-selected, but we would definitely like to go over your game. What team did you play for? Bon May says, hey, what's going on? Welcome to the stream. Say, Apollo, nice. I got you, bro. We'll actually look at that. So congratulations on actually helping your team. And also just playing with them, man. That's awesome. It's always good to play. So this is all about you, guys. This is all about you. Send some games over, of course. Or just tell me where you actually played, and I'll actually just analyze the game. And we're going to have it here on the live stream and check out everything. But before we get started, I actually want to show you guys. What's up, RPD350? We're going to look at the standings real quick. So take a look at the standings. We're in Group C. This is Week 7. Group C. What's up, Chess Win? Welcome to the stream. I'm the end of the board. Okay, got you, Separate 91 Is that your name on the, uh, on, on the team, too, as well? Same name? Okay, awesome. Awesome. So Group C. Here we are with Group C. The Mumbai Movers in first place with 6. Moscow Wizards right now with four. Sao Paulo, Capabaras, two. Armenian Eagles in fourth place right now. So they got some catching up to do. But next week, that's okay. It can still happen, and you guys are going to make it possible. So that's why you should play. And if you haven't signed up already, make sure you do so, so far. This is what goes on. The live club matches are 10 minutes per side with two-second increments. So you get to play alongside your team here. Make sure you guys sign up. Go to the fan clubs. Play in, in, in this tournament. Like, play. Why not? Here's the prizes right now, too. I saw some people streaming, so that was pretty awesome. Streamers are very, very good for this tournament right here, and you can win some money, $250 per group. So group C, there's $250 up for grabs for you guys, so make sure you get into that. Here's the bracket right now, so you guys know what's going on. St. Louis Archbishops, the Pandas, the Puffins, and the Snowballs. Again, the standings, and now let's get right into it. Let's get right into it. Sefer, 91. So... You played for, you said Sao Paulo. So Sao Paulo had 28 and a half versus the Wizards. The Wizards went off. Oh my goodness. I mean, it was just, they went off 79 and a half points. Are you serious? They came to play today. Like, obviously, they went off. So if you play for either team, first off, congratulations. If you played on any of the teams today, and thank you so much for what you've done for the series. But secondly, man, that was just a, that's a crazy showing. KCP40, thanks, bro. Good to see you. Hello from Switzerland. Good to see you, man. Switzerland in the building. Yeah, too many people, so they got rating advantages all over the board. I mean, they fan club. Hey, it's a fan club. And you guys should join who you want to play with, of course. But you are going to make or break teams, guys. It is you. You make or break teams. So definitely go join. Join all the teams if you like. Play every every round, whatever. But let's see what's going on with this with this match, man. I'm actually going to analyze your game first because you're in. I actually saw you over there. So I'm going to find you now. Sefer 91. Sefer 91. Oh, I found you. There you are. So you, you, you split. And what's the guy's rating? Okay, you split. He was 1,600. That's nice. Okay, you got you a nice split win there. A win and a loss over a higher rated player. That's awesome. You got a link to join us, RPD350. It should be. It's going to be in the chat soon. It's coming, actually. Oh, here we go. So this game right here is Sefer. I'm going to grab this right now and put in the PGN. Okay. Here we go. Fan club for the Puffins. That's right. It seems early for a Canty stream. It is. <laughs> it is. All right, so this first game, you actually play white, Sefer. Sefer 91. We're going to analyze this game just to see. So you play for the Capybaras here. And let's see what happened, brother, buddy. Let's see what happened. It's Art Vega here, by the way. We got a few games from Art Vega. Art Vega always comes to the stream, too. Oh, the man is streaming. That's right, Z Nation. 
we are streaming right now. So let's get right into this. Sefer 91. This is your game right here. You play with the white pieces. I'm going to flip the board here and we're going to check this game out. So currently in this game, Sefer 91 is playing for the Capybaras. Capybaras lost today to the Wizards, 79, 28 and a half to 79 and a half. So you did contribute to these 28 and a half points. Let's see what happened. Hit me with the truth. Just show me where I sucked. <laughs> We are going to help you get better here at the GM factory with a Jedi train. You're going to be fine. You're going to be fine, big fella. You're going to be okay. So Sefer 91 played white, and you actually in this game are 1208, and black is 1627. So you did split. It's two games. You play two games. So you split. So you're already playing higher than your rating. So let's see what happens in this game. We started out E4, C5. E4, best by test, my favorite ever, 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 ever. I love e4 so e4 is my favorite after e4 we have c5 okay after c5 knight of three usual stuff usual stuff knight c6 bishop c4 okay i was 980 i got a rating boost from this win wow oh oh so you had a provisional okay let's see what happened e6 so a lot of times with this e6 stuff you really want to stop d5 and i'm also going to tell you one thing about bishop to c4 you have to be very careful with playing this because you're committing right now you're committing right now so you don't understand and committing means like you're committing the bishop to this diagonal when he plays e6 he's almost blunting your bishop what this means is you never want to have a bishop kind of like block to how this is so when his bishop's here immediately i'm going to hit you with tempo you get a pawn in the center and actually probably be slightly better or preferred at least with the with the black pieces e6 is a very nice move i could play e5 right now and stop it but why allow yourself to have this kind of position when you should just play the standard you have two moves actually two moves in this position it should be c3 or d4 usually usually you can also play bishop b5 which is the rostalimo which actually messes up um a lot of times the opponents don't know what to do in this kind of stuff when you play bishop b5 actually uh world championship with Kirwana. they played this a few times actually so both sides both colors so they played this um, already and this was a it's a very interesting way to play I would say very positional you take this just to double the pawns and then you kind of play around the double pawns and etc get a nice little attack but it's very positional bishop b5 is a way to go but really bishop c4 i would not i would don't recommend you play this way unless after e6 you play knight c3 immediately which you did you did so it's a pass you get a pass for that because knight c3 because you're stopping d5 so knight to c3 it just doesn't allow you to play d4 in one thrust not in one thrust but with with uh c3 as well to get a big center so you have you chose something different rosalimo is my favorite since rpd 350 that's right nice that's what's up vin Silden in the building good to see you bro so what happened actually d6 so they chose d6 because they couldn't go d5 now let me tell you one thing about this position already i prefer white why do you think i would prefer white right now already already i feel like white has a huge advantage can anyone say why white has a huge advantage right now you tell me, Sefer91, why do I think you have a huge advantage right now? Bigger center? Slightly. Yeah, okay, we can say bigger center. Bishop's blocked here for black from Primogenitor. From Primogenitor. Primogenitor. Okay, okay. All right, got it. Primo. Bishop's blocked. Three developed pieces, taking pressure off. King James plays white, that's enough. <laughs> Better development, okay. Listen, if you got pieces on squares with plans and the ideas, that's why I can't eat. That's right. See the nation. Three pieces out, ready to castle. I like that KCP forty. That's a that's an addition. That's an addition. Um, who said actually bishops blocked? Primo, primogenit, primogenitor. Bishops blocked by. You're correct. Yes, that is correct. The bishops are blocked. B both of these bishops are absolutely bad already. It's already bad. But also on top of that, yes, I have three pieces developed. So that is another thing. But too many palm moves by black. In a way, yes. In a way. If he does not figure out what to do with b6 and like bishop b7 and bishop g7, he's going to, and I think you did win this game. So already, I mean, it's not a coincidence that you won this game. I always like to say it's um, it's hard to make good moves in a bad position. It's hard to make good moves in a bad position. And when you start having a bad position like this, you, it's harder to make good moves, which means you can end up winning. And that's what you ended up doing. So let's see what happened. Thanks for the follow, Desert Lighting. Thanks for the follow. Too many moves. Um, I have played black like this before, and I regretted it. Yeah, it's just this passive. Why play passive like this? When you play with the black pieces, it is your job most times to actually play aggressive or dynamic because you're going to be left in a passive position if you choose anything otherwise. So D6, and after D6 is D3. Very nice. I mean, solid and positional. Nothing wrong here. If I want to be truthful, it was an accident. I didn't want to spoil the game. We'll see. <laughs> Let's see. So D3, Knight of Six and castles 
Very good. So far, you have developed. Bishop to e7. The bishops have to go like this, unless he's going to choose to go this way, which this is just kind of miserable, to say the least, for black. <laughs> that's right, Jim. That's right. So it's just not good. This is just not good. So after after bishop to e3, we have castles. Okay. Jacobo, what's going on, man? I get in my own head when I'm playing when I'm black in the Sicilian and waste time moving pawns. This analysis is helpful. Absolutely. Absolutely, man. A lot of times the Sicilian is, yes, yeah, a lot of pawn moves in here, but it's really about when you choose to do the pawn move, because white has to do the same. If you look at it, we've made, you know, two pawn moves here. Yeah, which is, you know, he blacks only made three. So it's not really that bad, honestly. It's just of how you move the pawns is what and how strategic you are with them and etc. Now we can get D5 in later though. So actually, let's go back. Is D5 a move now? So I think this is the issue. After castles, d5 could be a thing. Let's go back again. When did he go knight f6? So looking at this, understanding what you have on the board a lot of times, and this is why you got to be careful in move orders a lot of times, like especially when the bishops or the pawns are around each other like this. This bishop can be attacked very quickly. We stopped d5. We got to be aware of that. So we stopped it. That's good. Knight f6 is now allowing d5. He can play d5 if he wanted to. And then what happened is... Oh, actually, sorry, I just spoiled it. Everybody saw the mate. I didn't even want to do that. But when we go back here to e6, let's go here. Take, take, take. Nice c3, castles. You play bishop e7. I know, right, Mark Savelli? Like, oh, man. Oh, it's okay, right. So after bishop e3, this right here is not a move. I'm going to put that in the chat right now. This is not a move. It is just not a move. White to play and win, guys. Or not, sorry, black to play and win. What is the move on the board? This is not a move. You should have lost this game, actually. Trini Power Up says busted. That's right. Playing the chess club busted. That is correct. It's busted. Black to move. Texas AU Tiger. What's up, John? What's going on? It says D5, hitting C4. Knight says anonymous. Primo with D5. BC player says D5. D5 wins a piece. 1,000% if you said D5, that is correct. Yes, D5. Why? Because I'm hitting the bishop. It makes a threat. Again, this is why this bishop move in the opening in the Sicilian usually is not that good. It's not that good. Because if it was that good, you would see it more. Bishop C4, Knight C3. You never usually see that in the Sicilian. It is different, but you need to know how to play it when you do play different. Thanks for the follow, XQ. So you have to, you got to know what you're doing here because immediately you're just losing the piece. If I move the bishop, I go d4. If I don't move the bishop, I take the bishop. If I take the pawn, we take the pawn. It's the same thing. And then we play d4 or d5. It's, it's over. You lose a piece, game over from there. What went wrong? How do we not do this again? Well, let's back up. After bishop to e7, when we're here with bishop, thanks Puffins. Rage, Rage Thanks for the puff. Thanks for the uh, follow, Puffins. So bishop e7. What you should not do next time, maybe play rookie one, rookie one, or figure out where to put this bishop later. Maybe put it on g5, put it on active squares. You usually want to put your pieces on the most active squares. Not all the time, not all of it, but most active squares, the most active. And the most active squares would be rookie one, bishop g5, stuff like that. Bishop e3 is not that active. This is more of a sit and wait kind of move. A sitting wait. Why do we need to sit and wait right now when we got an open game? Bishop is outside the pawn chain. Knights are developed. The cat, the king's castle. We got an excellent game. Rookie one and bishop g5. Rake Javik. Thank you so much, Ark. I always try to say it correctly, but it's so hard sometimes saying it's like it just just doesn't roll right. Ray Javik. Thank you. Thank you. My idea was to have an easy miss battery on b6 to sack an attack. Now I see it's a blunder. Yeah. On b5, it's usually good. Rick. On b5, it's usually good in Sicilia because black can kick it with the pawns if he can, if he wants to castle short. That's right. That's right. That's right. So let's go back to the game. Where where did you go again? Where's bishop e3? Right here. Okay, so we have bishop to e3 and then castles. After bishop e3 castles, you go a3. Again, this is still here. This is still here this is the problem a lot of times i'll show you what they do a lot of times in the city with this bishop on c4 you want to move it back to b3 so let's go back if you're gonna go bishop c4 and do this after knight to f6 because this can still be allowed right okay so after knight c3 d6 d3 knight f6 castles 
Bishop e7, you can just back this up now. Bishop to b3, because it's too close to the center right now, because pawns. I'm going to tell you, worst enemies for minor pieces, this is like, write this down. You know, this is the worst, worst pieces, or the worst things that the minor pieces hate is pawns in front of them. So pawns in front of them are minor pieces' worst enemies. They hate that, especially knights, because knights are restricted. I can't do anything. I can't do much. So you need to know that. Who plays the closest thing in 2019? <laughs> What's up, JT? What's going on, man? Japanese tutor, Japanese tutor in the building. So, yeah, that's a problem. You know, usually the pawns here are what make this bishop annoying. Because when you put it on bishop c4, I can play d5. It's coming. And then when you play bishop e3, because this bishop was so close to these pawns, which is his worst enemies most times, you know, bishops are like snakes in the grass where you can back them up like this. And when you played a3, you can back the bishop up to a2, which I think you did in this game. Bishop e3, castle, a3, a6, and queen d2. Queen d2, d5 was here for so long. It was here for so long. d5, d4. And you b5, and you play bishop a2. So the bishop did back up, and you got it all the way to a2. This is what we like to call a snake in the grass. It sits all the way on the other side of the board, still very sharp. This is the best kind of bishop to have, you know, a lot of times. It's away from everything. It can't be threatened or attacked. And now you now this is a, a favorable position because it's, it's scary because he never played d5. He never played d5. Bishop to b7. Again, he got a little bit of space, but his pieces are still not that good. Now, rook, a, rook f to d1. The rook f to d1. When do you want to use this rook? It all depends on the position, guys. It all depends on the position. But I tell my students this all the time with imagination. You need to imagine, right? If you can imagine what pieces would be best to checkmate based off this position and just not even making black moves, just making all white moves here. If this rook is here on f1, let's go back. How better does it look if we can do this? Just watch the arrows. Watch the arrows. Rook here, rook here, or rook here. Just watch how the arrows work. Maybe you could do this. This is the imagination you have to use a lot of times before you try to move a rook or before you move a piece. Where are my pieces aimed at? So if I move the other rook, you kind of misdirect your pieces and you mess everything up. So this rook is the word is not the rook you should be moving. It should be this one if you're going to move it either to D1 or to E1, which is a little bit better. Thanks for the follow, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. Thanks for the follow, Mr. Feathers. I wanted to break in a D file. I had to use the other rook. Yeah, yeah, use the other rook next time, bro. <laughs> I use, <laughs> I choose which rook to move by flipping a coin. <laughs> okay, all right, it's 2019. Hey, you know, you can do you can do whatever you like these days. So flipping a coin, oh, we're moving this rook. That's how it works. Okay, perfect, that was great. So moving this rook is better. Rook A to D1 and then D4 or something like that. But again, again, the arrow stings. This is just better. Rook F to D1. After rook fd1, he goes knight g4. That's a pretty good move. He's trying to get rid of this bishop. I am a fan of keeping bishops. I'm always a fan of keeping a bishop. So I probably would go bishop f4 myself, honestly. d4, that's good. Knight takes c3. Queen takes c3. Pawn takes. Knight takes. And you see what happens. What pieces become better when you open up a game? Class, raise your hand. What, what pieces become better when you open up a game? Bishops, says Bond Maid. You display the moves of the game because I focus in queen before knight, pawn, bishop. Rooks and bishops. That's correct. Rooks and bishops, right. Now, in this case, this, these bishops are very, very sharp. There's really kind of nothing you can do about this. I probably would have waited to play d4, but bishop f6, and this is a weak pawn. This is very weak, so you do have a target here. Queens, that's right. Double bishop for sure, yep. So you have to be aware of what you just did. Yes, you open up the game. You do have rooks and they're on an open file. So you do have some compensation. But you do have to realize that these bishops became from bad to now they're the best pieces on the board. So you got to be aware of what you've done in the position. So after d5, this is just not a move, big fella. It can't be. Well, maybe it is because bishop c5. He's trying to be tricky. But it looks like you can just take this. And then after bishop c5, maybe take again. You got e7 takes. Yeah, that's hanging the rook. So maybe b4. Thanks for the follow Appreciate that. Queens, more tactical. Yes, yes. So you play e5 and said uh, you actually still won this. I'm assuming he played bishop c5. That's why he played d5 to put the bishop on c5. You always have to ask yourself, especially, you know, at your rating, at your rating and above, 
a lot of times tac tactics will win games most times up to 2200 even or after 2200 tactics wins games so a lot of times you got to be aware of what your opponent is doing when this happens when there are captures available okay what is he doing what is he doing bishop to c5 of course a lot of times you should be aware of this all the time too this is an x-ray that i am always aware of even when pawns and pieces for instance if my king was on f1 and this rook is on f8 i i don't care how many pieces are in between this rook and the king my rook is on the king file or my king is on this file of the rook you need to always know that so vice versa anything else bishops are the same my queen and rook are like this i know that this could be an idea so i need to watch out for this idea so after d5 you do understand it oh it's there you know it just play b4 i keep the same threat i eliminate his and i can also double up and i'm still attacking this so it, it, it could work could work here come another butler pawn to pawn bishop so let's go back d5 e5 and bishop to c5 so he gets it but we do double up we do have some compensation and let me ask you this guys compensation is a very tricky very very tricky term a very very tricky um concept to understand and use compensation what compensation does white have here if you know anything about compensation what compensation does white have here better position but how how is this position better tempo from joey grips and development develop pieces from bc player i think i was ready to attack says sephir 91 active pieces okay more pieces attacking the king you guys are all right you guys are all right and and actually in a way active square is right what i don't like is this bishop here this bishop is, is absolutely terrible why is it terrible because his pawns are on the same color of the bishop so when this is when this happens it's really really bad it becomes really really bad so knowing this he's kind of down a piece but on the contrary how about your piece what about your bishop it looks exactly the same almost so we have to probably back this up remember the arrows we drew i don't know if you remember when i was like draw the arrows use the imagination this bishop needs to be somewhere attacking now that this is done okay you know what we got another way we got we need to do this now which means this is our compensation somehow we need to start using these pieces how many pieces does it take for a successful attack all my students know three at least so to have this with rook h4 rook g4 you know you don't have anything you're attacking with right now that's quotation marks because you're not actually attacking right now you need to get them set up so how do you do it maybe rook g4 or even queen to g3 followed by rook h4 put this bishop on b1 move this knight to e2 play c3 to open up this bishop put the knight on f4 and then put the knight on h5 with the queen attacking g7 and knight f6 for rook takes h7 all being a mate that is how you create it and that is how it happens immediately you already have a plan all the way to checkmate that's exactly how it could be but you have to imagine this first imagination goes a long way in chess a very long way but you have to understand the conversation first what am i doing if there is any conversation sometimes there's not conversation at all sometimes there is sometimes there is so queen takes d4 rook takes this is where we are now after that we have well i did imagine some of it let's see let's see queen b6 92 rook c8 c3 a5 you need that spongebob imagination gift oh imagination oh my goodness that's hilarious queen h3 bishop b1 uh-oh can we get some deep in emotes in the chat please can we can we just can we put those in the deep can we put some deep in emotes in the chat right now because this man has jumped off the deep end that is not a move get him out of here send the stretcher that's over he jumped right off the deep end all the way down with a smile it's over it's over and it worked 1700 lost to that he, yeah 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 he did yeah absolutely yes he did and it, and it shows that like yeah you could be less than you could be 1700 falling into this stuff 1700 queen takes eight seven mate on the board big fella start a new one game over this was very good sephir 91 very very good I like the fact that you still won this with Bishop TB1 and you still you still played on. You still played on and you made it work. Thanks for the follow. And you made it work. You made it work here. That was really good. That was really good. Now, what you need to improve on 
how do we improve because even the ones even the games you win you still need to improve so let's see what happened here again if we're going to move our bishop a lot of times you want to go bishop c4 and bishop b3 if you're going to play that you should also look into the Rosalimo if you like with bishop to b5 or either play c3 or d4 or d4 hey canty hello from brazil what's going on brazil welcome to the stream hope you're doing well hope you're doing well take the check discover it then mate yeah <laughs> that would be funny discovery then mate yeah that's funny but that was a great game i think that was a great game separate 91 and i think you played another one. Oh, this you did you played the other one too so this was the win this was the win congratulations on that win now we're going to pull up the other one this is the loss you learn more from your losses than you do your wins and it's very tough it's very very annoying to say the least because you have to you have to lose <laughs> you have to lose but if you look at it in a different way if you look at it as like i have to lose to get better then you're just going to get better it's part of the process it's part of the process so again the capybaras this is the fan club versus the moscow wizards fan club again this was the match 28 and a half to 79.5 the moscow wizards definitely just dismantled the competition today i mean 79.5 is, is ridiculous amount of points um, touching 80 points un, unheard of in a way so 79.5 and uh capybaras fan club they played so this was the second match we're going to go over the first one in a minute but shout out to sefer 91 for his games right now as we're going over them as he contributed to the 28 and a half points from sao paulo this is the other game that he had which is a loss so Let's look at this. Same game or same person. You play black this game. Result 1 0. Let's look at it. Okay. So you played uh you played black here. You played black. So let's flip the board and check it out. Alright, here we go. E4. E5. Probably you hung a piece like you did with the D. <laughs> That's my prediction. He's hung a piece. That's what he says. <laughs> okay, E4, E5. Knight of three. Knight c6. Bishop c4. Knight f6. Okay. All right. D4. Bishop d6. I have never seen this before. I have never seen this one. I mean, maybe technically it looks like a move. But you have to know ahead of time, if you're going to play something that's usually not played, for instance, what you usually, usually taking this is a move. You could take this. I mean, d5 is actually a move too, and knight takes c4. Weird stuff. It's very weird, honestly. But taking this is just usually fine. Bishop d6, bishop g5, h6, and queen. To, oh, you should take with the queen, man. You were fine. You were just fine here. You were just fine. Why did you take with the pawn, set for 91? Why did you feel like you had to take with the pawn here? I wanted the G file. Man, I mean, yeah, you can have the G file, right? But you know what's funny? I always tell my students this. It's not about what you want. It's about what you need to do in a position. It's never, it, it, not all the time. There's, there's always exceptions in chess, but it's about what you need to be doing. And this, you may want this, but this is probably one of the reasons why you lost the game. Because usually this is not played. You have to you have to know that, hey, if I'm going to double these pawns, my king safety is compromised. Which means if I go this way, I'm probably getting made it. But if I go this way, you know, I'll be, I may be fine, but I still have to get there. Also, you have blocked your bishop. So you can't play this. It's going to take an extra tempo. Tempo is time. It's going to take you more time to move this bishop, move this pawn, to move this bishop out, just to move this queen, just to castle queen side. By that time, you may be checkmated in 17 moves or something very fast. It's ridiculous because it's very hard to make good moves in a bad position. And you've already made yourself a very bad position here. With double pawns, looking rough, bishops on d6, you already play weird here. Anyway, if you ever play this right here, if you ever play this bishop d6 move, you your thing to do is to move this knight most times and play c6 and back it up it's called a kopek system basically what they do that is white where they play the bishop here on d3 and a sicilian they play c3 put the bishop back on c2 and then play d4 so it's the same thing here you would probably maybe get rid of this pawn or something like that eventually play c6 back this bishop up and then play d5 that's the only reason why you will put this bishop here in the opening 
if you if you had any other reason for putting this bishop here any opening besides that and defending this you probably are wrong you're just wrong and there but after h6 i like how you played this because you need to play aggressive and dynamic always remember if you play as black you need to play aggressive and dynamic most times if you want to win you know if you want to draw you can just play super solid stuff and just shuffle pieces all the time but you'll probably never win but h6 after h6 bishop takes knight and queen takes queen takes is the way to go at this point i got three pieces developed yeah it's kind of a weird bishop again but at the end of the day what if he trades this this is kind of what we want knight takes knight takes bishop takes i'm actually aiming here that's a big boy aim okay c3 uh and then i can go d6 my bishop's coming out i got the two bishops that's a slight advantage i'm doing excellent here queen h4 is gonna be nice especially if he castles i may i may get away with taking this because i'm hitting mate too there's a lot of stuff going on it may get away with it but it's not necessary i probably just castle because that's necessary f4 looks interesting takes g3 check i'm out of the way it's a whole different game whole different game whole different game pawn takes g6 or pawn takes f6 let's see what happened afterwards so now after g x f6 castles and then you take on d4 oh my goodness this is just so disastrous for the position double pawns bishop on d6 open g file though we got that open g file oh yeah we got the open g file but you got to use it we got to use it we got to do something about it bishop e5 okay making a threat making a threat and you defend it d6 okay we making some progress here making some progress get the bishop out take it and castle queen side hands in the air clap it up great job out of the terrible stuff that happened through the opening we castled and we're fine now and we're fine man that was ridiculous don't ever do this again next time take with the queen don't take with the pawn queen a3 king b8 queen b3 king a8 <laughs> that's funny that's funny king b8 and king a8 and you know what's funny it's very safe too it's very safe king's very safe and you guys need to know too when you do castle queen side your king is not fully castled fully castled until you play king b1 or king b8 that's a very good rule to follow why because it's safer here and here than it is right here most times so king b8 king b8 is nice a4 rook g8 now you start attacking you played a very good game actually you played a very good game from where it happened from what she was given oh my goodness don't ever do that again it sounds like one of my lessons send the stretcher <laughs> wayne beam in the stream what's up bro that's funny so rook g8 okay a5 he's trying to attack you a6 that's okay he might try to sack he might try to sack he, he did and you took the wrong pawn you got to be aware of what's going on always ask yourself this you obviously i think you did not ask yourself this question but you need to ask always from this point forward every time they move because this uh, this is very impressive this is very impressive you played a very good game um after you had a very bad opening but still ended up having a very playable almost like slightly better because of this 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 attack you can have with h5 h4 if he plays g3 and double the rooks and you might be winning but you had a very nice game from here also opposite color bishops it's not it's hard to say white's really that better that much better so you know with queen here i'm always asking what is he about to do next if you give him a second move this is what you always want to think ahead you know chess is about thinking ahead so when your opponent moves you always think about their next move before you think about your own so queen d3 what's his next move to take this before i think about my own which is bishop takes b2 so after queen d3 i'm going king a7 and i'm just about to sit here and chill right now just in case you take this and i'll take back and i'm fine then i can probably follow up but if you take now especially that's probably what happened is he probably took and maybe some issues happen after that and actually taking this this is cool to take but it, it just activated his rook so not only is he attacking with these two but he got this rook that he may hit you with in a minute and it may not feel so nice to get hit with the rook in the face let's see what happens okay one minute uh says hey canty balaji oh you have one minute left oh that's different yeah 10 minutes in these time controls guys it is still blitz 10 minutes with two second increment there's a lot going on in your head here 10 minutes two second increment what's up balaji good to see you man good to see you bro how are you bishop takes a6 he takes it i am i will be scared for my life to take on <laughs> to take this bishop that's just not happening and just gonna act like you know what you won that one you can have it it's yours 
You have it. Oh, Bishop B7 right now, says Balaji. Balaji's an FM, by the way. Um, basically, very strong. I mean, he's IM, IM GM strength, honestly. But Bishop takes B7. It's his first choice. That sounds right to me. Sounds right to me. It looks pretty good. Bishop B7. But he didn't play, he played G3, actually. Bishop D4. Oh, yeah, you just jumped off the deep end. Let's put that in the email. Let's put those in the chat for Sefer91. For jumping off the deep end right there. Bishop takes B7. It's over. You also had a minute left, too. Bishop B5. So Bishop takes... Oh, man. Oh, man. Everything's mate. Everything. Hey, hi. How are you, mate? Hey, I just woke up, mate. What's for lunch, mate? Everything is mate. Everything is mate. Let's go back to that again. Everything was mate. That's right. It was tough. Very tough game. But you kind of caused this on yourself early, early on. As as we go back, if we look at this again. For next time, first off, man, Bishop D6. Good day, mate. Oh, that was good, Zibby. That was good. Hey, Canty, how's it going? What's up, Agent Jail? Yo, yo. How are you, man? Good to see you, bro. Are you still in Michigan or no? Are you still in Michigan? Good to see you. My problem was I didn't know how to defend Bishop takes H H6 sacks. Sometimes you just don't have to take it. Sometimes you just don't take it. Yeah, I yeah. am. Good to see you, man. Ain't you, are you over 2,200 yet? He's like 12. 12. You over 2,200 yet, bro? USCF. That makes you an NM now. Bishop c4, not, yeah, I am, great. Oh, wait, no, that was the other thing. Are you over 2200 yet, bro? So, knight f6, d4. Canty, what's good? What's going on, knight rider? Good to see you, knight rider. Wow, good to see you. I'm actually 15. <laughs> I'm actually 15, bro. <laughs> My rating is 2210 right now. I haven't played much in 2019, though. That's okay, man. That's okay. I did slow down, actually, myself. I'm a master in high school. I was 17. So, you know, young phenom here, Agent JL, 15 years old, 2200. I've been out for a long time. I know, bro. I know. I know. It's been a while, Knight Rider. Good to see you. Good to see you. So, Sephir91, you played a great game here. Now, with Bishop D6, I don't recommend this anymore. I recommend it. Honestly, just take the pawn. Just take the pawn, bro. Or if you're going to do this, you have to go with, you know, make sure you take this later. Play C6. Back this bishop up. Just like how we talked about before. So, Great job contributing to the points that you did, Sephir91. Out of 28 and a half points, you contributed one point to the points that they had for the Sao Paulo, Sao Paulo Capabaras versus the Moscow Wizards. That was awesome, my dude. That was awesome. Very, very good. Thanks for, um, for letting us look at your games, man. Is there anyone else that played for any team today? Anyone else before we get into the other games that I chose? Is there anyone else... Thanks for analyzing my games. I really appreciate it. No problem, Sephir91. Make sure we see you next week. Okay, make sure you play next week. Okay, so you can contribute to these points. Is there anyone else in the chat that has played for any of the teams today? Any of the four teams that played today? And we can look at your game as well. All right. And I'm going to move over here. Cool, so let's move on to the first match today. The first match was the Mumbai Movers and the Armenian Eagles, which ended in a draw. So let me show you, let me tell you, you know, how how ahead the Wizards were today. The Wizards had 79.5 points today. The M Mumbai Movers and the Armenian Eagles had a draw today at how many points? Can anyone tell me? How many points did the Mumbai Movers and the Armenian Eagles have today? It ended in a draw. How many points did they have? It actually ended in 21. Each side. 21 for the movers 21 for the eagles the moscow wizards finished with 79 and a half today 79 whoa they are like a force to be reckoned with right now 79 and a half 
Oh my goodness. Something has to be done. It's like they have a super team over there. So wizards are going off. So that was crazy. That was a lot. That was like the highest we've seen. So now 21 and 21. This this match ended in a draw. We pulled some games here. We're gonna look at a fellow a fellow um player that actually plays a lot. Every single time, every single time we've had this, we've analyzed one of his games. Doesn't seem like he's here right now. But for some reason they got two points penalty because their players didn't show up on time. Oh yeah. Yeah, that didn't happen. But um Art Vega. Art Vega is a very, very good player. He's a good player, and he's also very active. He's 1931, and we're gonna look at we're gonna look at a game from him. Actually, two games. We have two games for him. He played for the Mumbai Movers, so he contributed a half out of two to the 21 points that they had. Canty, what's up, Spearmint72? What's going on? So we're gonna look at some of his. He's 1932, and his opponent. His opponent that we're going to look at today is 1944. So this is a higher level game, higher level game. So if you're not 1900 or anything, does it help you a lot? If you are, then cool. Let's look at it, see what happened. See if we can learn anything from this game today. So our Vega played the black pieces in this first game. I'm actually going to update, update the PGN right now. And this black played this. Art Vega played the black pieces. And he's actually playing for the Mumbai Movers here. Mumbai movers. Let's see what happens. E4, E5 is on the board. Roy Lopez kind of stuff, or even even E5. I used to play the open Spanish and um, the Philidor. I would play those back in the day. But knight of three, knight to C6, bishop C4, and knight of six. This is basic theory here. D3, bishop C5. Okay, C3, D6. Castles, castles. A few pawn moves. This is basic opening stuff here. Basic opening stuff. So, you, you know, you, you get the pawns out. You develop bishop, knights, and castle. It's easy stuff. Always happens. So, h3. h3 is about stopping bishop g4. They call this the quiet game. Why is this called the quiet game? Because it's literally nothing happens for like 30 moves sometimes. It's just chilling back and forth. a6, h3, move this one out. Okay, it's like a Roy Lopez almost. <laughs> It's a quiet game. It's very quiet. But the Roy Lopez is uh usually more theoretical in, in some lines. So Planet Chess Club with the Ray. Thanks so much for the Ray. Welcome to the stream, man. Good to see you. Let's go. Chilling like villains. Peace chance camp. What's going on, guys? We are going over. This is the Pro Chess League Summer Series post recap and analysis. Going over some games from the Pro Chess League Summer Series today. If you played, if anyone from the Raid has played today and you have a game or you did play today, we'll look at some of your games here on the stream. Yo, yo, what's up, Canty? PCC in the building, guys. Planet Chess Club is here. Planet Chess Club. So, Bishop to E6 is on the board here. We're looking at a game, actually. This is from the first match. The um, Mumbai Movers versus the Armenian Eagles. They ended in a draw, 21 to 21 points. The Moscow Wizards went off today with 79 and a half points. Almost like all three scores combined from the other teams today could uh, just pass. <laughs> or equal like 79 and a half like that was ridiculous by them boys today so they, they definitely went off the wizards went off and we're looking at a game right now from art vega who's 1900 he comes to the stream quite often and actually he plays in all the events every week so we're analyzing one of his games he's 1900 playing the black pieces white's playing and white is 1900 as well the tourney is over i'm playing for the puffins but i forgot yeah man you can play for any team you can actually play next week too in group c group c is going on night me 98 says raid what's going on so bishop e6, this is a quiet game so far as Joko Piano. Bishop c2 with the intention, I'm assuming, to go here. This is my favorite kind of stuff to do. I would love to do this in the Roy Lopez. I used to do this for both sides, actually. I would play the Roy Lopez for white and also for black. I didn't get the notification. I'm in here now. <laughs> Massmith 928 what's up, bro? I'll I'll go to Discord, too. Read your message in Discord for that. Because um, I sent you a message, Matt. I'm playing for Barcelona. Oh, you are? Okay. Sweet. Sweet. So bishop c2, d5. After d5, bishop to g5. That's a good move. Hmm. Bishop g5. What do you do? This is under attack. Not really, though. You just could probably just go h6. Just kick it. He took first and take. Okay. Whoa. How did that happen? Let's go back. 
Move right here. Okay. Bishop c4. Oh, that's a sweet move. Ar Vega. Sweet move. Bishop c4 and rookie one. Hmm. Rook e1, queen takes d1, bishop takes d1, rook d8. I don't know about rook d8. I just don't know about rook d8. You have to you have to address this. I always tell people that. You have to address this. Like bishop takes f6 is a thing, or bishop e7. What's Team USA tournament about? Oh, I'm not even sure. Oh, that's probably something. Um, that's a different kind of tournament. It's like a daily tournament, I think. Grand Knight. Rook d8, knight d2, bishop e6. We back up. It's just you have to deal with this. This is very annoying. But I do like the fact that he's about to double on this file, I'm assuming. Bishop a4, b5. You have to stop this. Good day to you, sir. Good day to you. Good day to you. Good to see you. g4 and bishop back to b3. Everything's solid. Everything's solid for white here. And white is playing very good. You have to remember, guys, these are 10-minute games with two-second increment. So they're both strong. He's just on you. <laughs> All right, Matt Smith. Perfect. Perfect. So bishop to b3. Rook to d3 and double up. I thought rook d3 was a nice place to, to drop this piece, too. Why? You always want to recognize a hole in a position. What's a hole in a position? An empty square. Simply put, an empty square is a hole in a position. Like this. It's an empty square. If you look at Black's position, where's the empty square? This one, but realistically, how how would you get here? Is this a hole that you can actually like put a piece on? Not really. So, But this one is. This one is. Rick D3. I mean, you would love to get a knight here, but the again, you know, knights, knights, minor pieces, worst enemies are the pawns like in front of them. So this knight is blocked. I would love to be able to get the B4 to swing in here. So maybe a move like b4. So you can take this. Knight takes and knight to d3. And if he doesn't take it, he goes c4. He kind of blocks this, but makes d4 very weak. So I actually take over kind of both of these squares. Kind of both of them. So let's see what happens, though. He played rook d3. Bishop c2. We backed up to d7. Kind of gained a tempo. Made this bishop go back on a worse square. And we can also just double up. Knight to b3, bishop b6. I'm liking black's position. It's very active. It's just the issue of him taking this. Maybe knight h5 should be played. Knight d2, and he played double up. Yeah, he probably, I think it's time for knight h5. This looks good. Knight h5, it threatens like f6, and then swinging into f4, and finally into d3. This is positional 101. Tough stuff here. Your, pe your piece is looking good. And when you get good pieces, it's now about, okay, what can be better? How can I improve my position? This is what, you know, grandmasters always think about this. What, what, how can I improve, improve my position? What's my worst piece? It's not really this rook. This rook is going to get here. It's really, you know, especially once they go here, it, when they do take this, it's not like you winning. Like, it's just not fun. Even a square in front of this, like even a series like right now. Let's just, let's go here. And he didn't take it yet, but he went here. If he, if he goes this route and then I swing in here, this is kind of annoying to face. Yeah, this this knight's hanging right now, obviously, but for the teaching purpose of like saying that this square is very annoying. And after I get g4 in, then I can go knight f5 and I'm just going to take over the f5 square and probably swing around just like in a Roy Lopez, Roy, Roy Lopez fashion, knight f1 and then knight h4 and then knight g3 and I get a knight on f5. And that could be very, very scary just because of the double pawn. Knight d2, I double up. A4, H6, takes, 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 takes. He defends. Yeah, these pawns are tough. This is an excellent pawn structure. Or these two pawns here, guys, it's good to know you can do this for white or black. E either side, when you have this kind of pawn structure, you're having a good game. What do I mean? C3 and E4. Why is this a good pawn structure? How many squares do I cover? Let's count it. Two. I, really, these two. This one counts, but it really don't. But these two are squares... I cover two of the four center squares, but a pawn is not even in the center, really. It's very strong to notice. And with the black pieces too, anyone that plays the black lion or the Philidor defense, I recommend you look into it too. It's a very strong opening. It's very underrated, but you will get crushed if you don't know what you're doing or if you misplay, misplay and move on or you destroyed in, in the first few moves. But the, um, the black lion is very strong. Very strong, and they have that kind of C6 and E5 setup. 
where you control two squares in the center. You should know that. Pie Man says, yo, what's going on? Welcome to the stream, bro. So knight a5. Knight a5 by R Vega followed by knight to c4, I'm assuming. Thanks for the follow, Bitsu. Thanks for the follow. B3 restricting this knight. Again, look at how look at how these pawns are. These pawns are <laughs> annoying. They're annoying. When you got pawns in front of your pieces, they can't advance. So it gets annoying. That's why the worst enemies of your minor pieces most times are the pawns. Because you can't do nothing. It's just annoying. You got to probably pay B4, even C5. Balaji says, my internet is unstable. It's annoying. How about C5, C4 followed by Knight B or B4, C4? Yep. And that was I was just about to say that, Balaji, because that's correct. C5 is probably the only move you should be making here because you need to kind of press forward. Knight A5 here, are you just about to go back? And then... You have no squares with the knight. So when you move your knight and you still got no squares, it's a bad knight. Like, if something's wrong. Or you got to figure something else out. Like, you move the knight, I got no squares. I can't move the knight. And if I go here, I can, I can probably have some squares. So maybe knight b7 with the intention of going knight c5 to go to d3. And if he goes b4, then he makes a hole on c4. And then knight d6 to go to c4. Just knowing the holes of the position. Trying to, you know, say that, hey, this double rook is good. But if we go to an end game and this doesn't work out, black's going to be worse because his pawn structure is worse. And that's a lot of times you need to know that. So the knight h5 move was crucial. You got to make a lot of decisions in between the middle game and the end game about how the end game is going to look. So this was, I just don't think this was a great decision of, of uh, allowing bishop takes f6. He played king f8. Get out of the way. King f1, king e7. Got the king to the center. That's good. And he did the same. b4. That's a very tactical move. I thought he would play this, or this could be a move. What if he takes it, you ask? Well, knight to c6, just so I can, I can go here. It's counterplay. There's some counterplay. I'm also threatening, like, you know, knight e5, followed by bishop takes, followed by bishop takes. I mean, this is cool. Like, b5, knight here, takes, takes, rook. I don't even know where we go. He couldn't go rook a7. Maybe, like, rook c1. Then you could take this, and then take this. Tactics. Tactics win games, guys, but... This is uh, it's pretty sharp stuff, but at the end of the day, and he got double pawns. Shoot, black could be better. Yeah, black could be better there. So B4 was interesting. Very tricky stuff. You always got to watch out for this in in-game. So um, white being the 1900 that he is in this game, he plays C4. He was like, yeah, I'm not I'm not going for none of that, which is understandable. It's a, You don't want to give your opponent counterplay. Knight C6, rook A, rook A6, and he checked him anyway. We still kind of went for that same line he took with the rook. But after bishop f2, king f2, rook d2, king e3, only slightly better. Correct. But then rook c2, that was, that's pretty nice. Ooh, yeah, rook c2, rook d8, rook c1. Or if rook c2, rook c2, rook d1. Yeah, that's right. That's right. A little bit nice. Rook d4, knight f3. You can win a pawn here. Take, take, take. And he won a pawn. Is this the game he won or lost? Oh, he drew this, I think. I think he drew this game. He drew this game. Rook c4. Rook c4 win. Rook c4 win. Bishop takes, takes. Rook d1, rook a7, and rook d3. Trade him off. Does that work instead of rook d1? Let me see. Hold on. Bishop takes f2. I'll be right here. Tell me about this. Takes takes oh this check oh yeah but he has king e3 and then rook c2 rook c2 yeah is, there is no yeah there's yeah nothing works rook c2 no in a game line oh in a game line the game line let me see b4 c4 knight c6 thanks for the follow happy con 601 appreciate that knight check takes rook takes oh rook c4 right now okay oh that's sweet balaji that's sweet rook c4 rook c4 but does he have bishop d3 but then you take rook takes d3 and then bishop takes h a6 let's look at it let's look at it it's good to have balaji in the chat balaji's an fm so as we run through ideas here as we analyze this game guys this is all the resources you should always go through i think he has bishop d3 though but let's see rook takes pawn takes check thanks for the follow fake blues 
Um, check. Bishop d3. Snap. Snap. And snap. Ooh, that's cold. That's cold. Yeah, that's out right there, big fella. No rook c4, rook c4, rook d8. Rook c4, rook d8. Oh, and then bishop d3. Oh, my goodness. Ouch. That might be over, big fella. Rook c4. Rook takes d8. No, but then rook takes c2. But then he can go rook d2. How about rook takes here? Check. Snap, rook d2. Not working. Bishop b3. This is interesting compensation. Very interesting. But then you just take once and sack. Yeah, it's, it's different. It's different. It's a different kind of game. I mean, compensation here is crazy everywhere. Craziness. Rook takes c4. Rook takes d8. Can I queen this pawn? Black is definitely playing for a win. I know. He definitely is. Queen King takes d8 is just not a move. Takes bishop, takes bishop d3. I take a6. He takes back. I push king d2, push, and he's there. He's he's getting the queen. It's not happening. So that just won't happen. So what he can do is after rook takes d8, we have to go for this line. Then after rook d2, it forces us to go for this. And we are playing for the win because we got two bishops plus a pass pawn able to go. And we also can snag this one if the king try to get, you know, trying to trying to get hefty here, trying to do his thing, move around, trying to get froggy or something. Bishop takes f2. Not going to work, big fella. So connected pass pawns. Yeah, this is connected too. Ouch. This could be over. I wonder what the eval reads here. Eval says it's minus one. It's actually minus two almost. It's minus 1.68. Crazy how compensation works, guys. This is minus almost minus two, meaning black is almost up two pawns according to the engine. Why? Look at the compensation. Two bishops in an endgame. In an endgame. Also, I have two connected pass pawns here. And this one's very close to queening, especially after something as simple as this. Here, 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 here. You might be in trouble. You might be in trouble. King here, I might snap this just because it's there. And black knights suck. Correct. His knight sucks. And this rook is only a capable of doing so much. Doing so much here. This might be a move too. Bishop here trying to go here. And queen. All kind of things. E4 is also hanging. Oh my goodness. Yeah, it's just too much. It's too much. Too much. That's a sweet game. That's a sweet game. But unfortunately, he didn't go for this. It was very, very tough stuff to see anyway. Check. Takes. Rook takes, and then he trades everything off. He takes on f2, we take on d1, and we got this same kind of position where I think this ended in a draw, so he must have, he had to botch this because this looks just like a win. Check, and he just went for the draw here. Wow, perpetual, perpetual all the way out. Rook d1 is the safe advantage. So he just took a draw here, guys. Art Vega playing another 1900 here in a better position. It was kind of tough to figure this out, honestly. Especially after he got here, because you can't cross. If you could cross, it could help you escort. You can't push this because the knight's holding it down quickly. Every time you go here to try to take it, he's actually going to check. He could also probably try to bait you into taking this, and then come back and check you just because he went into peace. There's a lot of stuff that could happen, um, but let's see what's up. King c7, beast bishop d7, says Balaji. Looks like it, and rook gets to the b file. Get a, or get the rook off the b file and push. And actually maybe play bishop a4, maybe walk the king around, or actually play rook a4 to try to walk this through some more. A lot of stuff you could do. Our Vega played a very nice game here. Ended in a draw. Thanks for the follow, Captain Bearface. Nice name. Thanks for the follow. So we're going back here. And Rook B7. Rook takes B3. Knight D2. And it was just a... He took a draw here. King C5 is no good. Yeah, that's a nice king move. Again, if these pawns weren't doubled, it wouldn't be that bad. It wouldn't be like you have to fight for what you're fighting for right now. Hmm. Yeah, I was thinking f5. f5 also looks good. Yeah, when you get here, I was thinking f5. Takes, but bishop takes. And then what happens on rook takes f7? Instead of draw. Yeah, I mean, what happens in this line? f5 takes, takes. Rook takes f7. You go back to e6. And then he goes back rook b7. No, after king c6. After king c6. Which is here. Okay, and then he goes here. Oh, now f5. So you don't hang anything. Take, take. And then we back that boy up one time, and we play f5, which we may be okay. And then instead of fighting for the draw, actually, right, this might be even winning. Once I get f5 and e5 in, because if you move the knight, I'm able to push. I'm also able to take on f5. The knight is not, uh, the knight is, like, loose, you know. He can't, he doesn't have that many squares and stuff. I can push this through. Um, this is in-game technique, guys. You got to look at in-games like this and analyze just like this many times with an engine, with a friend, with somebody like that, because you need to know your in-games. You need to know your in-games and how to win them or how to draw them if you are losing. 
like white did in this game. He found a way. Black was just not trying to figure it out. And he went for the perpetual. He went with the perpetual. Glad he says not with the engine. <laughs> it, it, sometimes. It depends. But I, I like to use the engine with the end game sometimes. Especially first by yourself, then the engine. Correct. Yes, by yourself, then the engine. By yourself with a friend, then the engine. Igor Smirnoff. Cool. Good stuff. That was pretty good. Let's look at this next game from it from Art Vega. Same guy, different game. This is the one he lost though. This is the one he lost. He played actually with the white pieces this game too. With book or books or self analysis. Well, you you I mean of course most times you do have the you get the in game study from the book. So read through the book and by yourself, go through other lines. Both I would say says Balaji correct both. Both. Okay, let's put this other PG in. This is um, um, Art Vega playing again for the Mumbai Movers here versus the Armenian Eagles. As this is his second game, and he took a draw here. Or he, he lost this one. This was a very long game. 67 moves. Looks like another end game here. Looks like another end game. If you want to look at, take a look at the standings, by the way, guys. This is what the standings look like after today. Week 1 of Group C. Week 7 of um, for, the, for Group C. But Week 7, Pro Chess League Summer Series. So Mumbai Movers with six points. Moscow Warriors got four. So the Capybaras with two. I mean Eagles with zero. So next week, same time for the next ones. Also, guys, I want you to see who's playing for each team. Check this guy out. Who knows this stud, this monster right here. Ferruja playing for the Capybaras. Group C. What a guy. What a monster. Destroyed Arena Kings yesterday. Destroyed it. Actually, I mean, he's right behind Naka. And um, he ended up, I think, in fourth place. But still, the games that we saw, unbelievable, right? Unbelievable. Then we got Boris, Tigra. Oh, my goodness. We just saw him win a Bishop and Rook in game versus Rook and Pawn. Sweet. Amanatov playing for the movers here. And then you have Savin. I just saw him at World Open. Very cool guy. Just saw him. I never saw this team during the season. Oh, you mean uh, which team? Which team are you talking about? Balaji, which team? This is also official bracket, guys, just to get you caught up on a bracket, what it's looking like right now. St. Louis Archbishops um, are have their spot. The Pandas got a spot. Puffins are in and the Snowballs. Oh, yeah. I didn't see them either. Absolutely, yeah. The right, they weren't around. All right, so here we go. Let's get into the second second game here. This is the game um, that Ar Vega, and who is Ar Vega? Ar Vega plays all the time. He's played on the, all the teams basically, all of them. And Ar Vega always comes to the stream. He's unfortunately not here today, but he was actually on on all the streams and watching the analysis of his games as he plays a lot. Puffins, baby, yeah, baby says unfeather flamingo. All right, let's go. So here we go, d4, knight of six, c4, g6, knight c3, d5, a Grunfeld, kind of, something like a Grunfeld, yeah, it is. Fabi is in St. Louis Bishop, right, that's right, that's right, Fabi is in St. Louis Bishop. Pawn takes, knight takes, and bishop d2, interesting. Now, honestly, I don't play d4, so looking at this, I'm just not a fan of bishop to d2, maybe it's a move. Maybe it's a move. And a lot of times, if you're wondering right now, why doesn't he go e4, which is a main line. e4, knight takes, pawn takes. And then after bishop g7, they end up going c5. And the job, your sole job, if you don't have a center, is to attack the one that is there. So if you do have a center, then it's your job to protect it and hold it and keep it. You know, and, and like go from there. So same center control and then hold it. Right. Yep. So you need to make sure that, you know, you either keep this. You keep this like at bay, or black's definitely going to attack it a lot. A lot. I used to play this as black, but there's so much theory to it that it's ridiculous. I mean, it's ridiculous. I like the king's in defense. That's a lot of theory, too, but I'm like, I feel like it's less theory than the grand field. You know, so knight takes, pawn takes, and uh, oh, that's actually not the game. But he played bishop d2 in the game. Very interesting. So after bishop d2, bishop to g7, we just develop, keep moving, no problems. E4 and knight to b6. Now this pawn is under attack, so you need to probably go bishop e3, moving a piece twice out of the opening. That's usually a rule that um, Capablanca does not like. You usually don't want to move a piece or refrain 
for moving a piece twice in the opening. So bishop to e3, castles, h3, stopping bishop to g4. Knight f3 is definitely on the way. f5, really all out the gate already. Look at that f5, strong. Very strong here. And our Vega is playing white. f5 was a very strong move. I'll come America with work and travel program. Oh, that's nice. It's gonna be nice, man. F5. That's a strong. I like this move because it, again, it's attacking the center. And also, when you castle, it's kind of game time. When you castle, you can do what you like. A lot of times, it's king's castle. The development is not lacking. Of course, yeah, these pieces can come out, but I mean, his center is not that strong. And F5, I think, was a nice thrust here to be able to do something. E5 looks like that could be a move, but I think C5 is going to break up a lot of the center. It's a lot of stuff going on here. Maybe C5, pawn takes knight F to D7. E6, yeah, I probably don't want that. It's a pawn on E6, but I could go knight E5, knight E4, knight E5. Weird. Very weird. I'm not a fan of this position as white, though. Pawn takes, takes knight F3, bishop E2, A4. Man, you got a castle. A5, knight d5, queen b3. You got a castle, bro. Take, take. Bishop c4, steal, no castle. He played king f1. All of this work, and you didn't even castle. Unless this was a mouse slip. This is the game he lost. What move is this? This is move 16. You have to castle your king, guys. Come on now. This is a given. You have to castle. Bishop takes h3 to knight g5. I think that works right. Oh, actually, mate. What? Bishop takes a3. Oh, mate. Bishop d3, though. Does this work? Does this work? Bishop d3. Bishop d3, queen g4, 91. I'm defending. Weird position. It's probably not working. Yeah, this is tough. And all these unnecessary moves, all these unnecessary moves has now, like, destroyed everything. Black has an excellent position. How does this happen early on? I mean, bishop d2, bishop e3 stuff. You gotta just, you got some of this stuff, you just gotta stick to the main line. Or knight f3, or play e4. Figure it out. e3 may be more solid, and then put the bishop on d2, bishop c4. There's many ways you can play it. You can even play g3, bishop g2. There's so many things you could do. Don't think it's a mouse split. <laughs> No, I don't think it was a mouse slip. I don't think it was a mouse slip. I think he played king f1 purposely. But, I mean, when you got to play king f1, first off, look at, you got to think about this, like, you know, as a whole. You're playing with the white pieces, so you have the first move, you have the advantage. Number two, okay, you know, you have a big center. You had a nice center. But also, number three is like, when you got to move your king to f1, you're probably not winning a lot of times. Unless, you know, there's some compensation on the board. And going back to that position here... This is, what compensation would you say you have as white? You can't say you got two bishops. Okay, he got two bishops too. E6 is slightly hanging. Your king, and remember I talked about this earlier, if you still hear the rook. Like, when my king is on is sitting here, you know, I feel this uncomfortable pressure. I don't care how many pieces are here on this line. You feel this uncomfortable pressure. So knowing this, this is, uh, this is not fun. This was a tough position to face, period. What do you even do? And it, D4 is hanging. No coordination in the pieces. No chemistry in my pieces. I mean, it's tough. You might have to go King G1. Probably sit the King on G1. <laughs> and do a castle that way. Because then Bishop takes H3 wouldn't work because Rook takes H3. But how do you develop the Rook? I mean, King G1, King H2? Wow. Really? You waste three tempi like that. Just to get the King over here. Just so you can move everything else. Knight takes D4. There it is. How much time do they have any games? It's 10 minute with two second increment here. It's the format right here. Two rounds of 10 minute with two second increment. That's usually how it is. Knight takes d4. Bishop takes d4. Bishop takes d4. And rookie one. Yeah, you finally, it feels good to threaten something finally. Like, oh my goodness, I finally can make a threat. Rookie one. And queen c2, trying to get the queens off the board here. Does that work? Seems like that doesn't work. I just win material. Yeah, bishop takes first. 
Whoa, something gotta be wrong. Maybe not though. Maybe not. You can't get queen c3 in. That would be a dagger. I wonder what the evaluation reads here. There is mate on a board, by the way. It's actually equal. Pie man says thank you. No problem. It's actually equal. I mean equal meaning like minus 0.43. You know, it's like it's equal. Five pawns to five pawns. He does have two bishops. If one of these are about to be taken. I wonder what he did. He took on d4. Rook takes. King g1. He finally played king g1. I wonder if he can take this. Did he play queen takes f2? He didn't. Balaji, you here right now, right? Queen takes f2 works or no? No, it don't because he got queen f3 in the end, I think. Queen takes f2. King takes. Bishop takes d3. Queen f3. Rook takes. Pawn takes. And then, yeah, I'm just down in exchange. Wait, no, I got this extra. Yeah, yeah, I'm just down in exchange. The f rook's gone. Yeah, it doesn't work. It just looks good. But you always have to think of these things first, guys. You always have to think of these things first. But king g1, maybe this is just winning. No, queen's hanging. Dang. Nothing. Rook d1? No, that's hanging. <laughs> Everything's hanging. Bishop e4 for queen f2, but he could just take it. Any crushing moves here? Nothing? Nothing crushing. Best move, they say, is queen d2 is the best move. That's, that's tough stuff. Takes, takes. Rook d2. Oh, I'm sorry, what? Did you just jump off the d-pin here? Oh, okay. D-pin emo for Art Vega. It must, it must have been time. It must have been time. But he definitely just jumped right off here. All the way down with a smile. Bishop e or bishop d5. I just gave up the whole bishop. It's gone. That's tough. That's tough stuff. I mean, it's a tough position anyway. You never want to allow your opponent to have a 7th rank too. And how did he lose this game? He lost his game based off of development and chemistry. He didn't castle early. You got to stick to fundamentals. Chess Fundamentals by Capablanca. That's one of my favorite books. I recommend you go get it. You can actually find a PDF if you're into that. And if you want the PDF, actually, you can just message me. Message me and I'll get it to you. It's an email. But I can just send it an email. But the PDF is a very nice thing from um, Chess Fundamentals by Jose Capablanca. Excellent book. But he says that, you know, try to refrain from moving a piece twice in the opening. And stuff like that. And other things that are beyond that. But he played a very tough game here. And allowing the, the Rook to having the 7th rank here or the 2nd rank for White. Pretty tough. Development was, non, was not there. It was not there. And look, he still played this on. I mean, this game went another... This game went another 40 moves. Does he also say avoid King F1? Uh, you know what he should he actually he does say castle. You said you should be casting making king safe and king f1 Is not that so it's probably the same But rook d2 let's let's just go through the rest of the moves here I want to see how he lasted so long after this because that's impressive After losing a piece the game went another 40 moves. I Gotta see it Okay. I mean, this literally went 40 moves, bro. King g5. There's still another 20 moves from here. <laughs> King h6 threatening mate. What? How do you allow this? No, that, that is mate. That's mate, bro. How did he allow this? Look at his king. Talk about a fight. Yeah, I think he could take on g4, though. It's a good day when you realize, again, that people like Canty exist at the same time we do. Thanks, mate. Thanks so much. We are robots. Welcome to the stream, big fella. So we're going over Art Vega's game here, trying to figure out how this game went so long after this. G5. Whoa, G6. Oh, my goodness. Talk about fighting, guys. This is how you use all your pieces. Okay, this is definitely very educational at this point. Looking at this, understanding right now, white is threatening checkmate. Rook check. Rook check and rook h6. This is how you use every single piece. This is how you use every single piece. He has his king involved. Both his rooks are on the seventh rank. It's already hard to get one on the seventh rank. When you got two on the seventh rank, it could be devastating results. So two rooks on the seventh rank, using the only pawns I have left, shielding the king still, no checks available unless he sacked his rook. I want to know how he got out of this. 
Oh, that's what he did. He sacked the rook. Uh, he sacked the rook and then played bishop takes g6. Wow. Would love to, t to know the time situation. Me too, actually. I would love to know what the time was at this very moment. Bishop to c2. Bishop c2. Yeah, bishop c2. Takes, takes. That was an excellent sequence there. I mean, he found the only way to now just go winning. To just be winning. Oh my goodness. Oh, he, yeah, he got him now. He got him. Yeah, he got him now. Wow. Can't you protect, but he also attacked. Correct. Wow, that was crazy. That was crazy that that game, I was up, he was up a whole piece, and then he ends up winning by a pawn in game. <laughs> Just as wild like that. Our Vega with surprising us again with two awesome games. Just like that. As we learn from this one, guys, you got to develop your pieces, okay? You have to develop fast. Develop fast in Castle. There is nothing else to do. Develop in Castle and then worry about everything else. Because if you worry about everything else, then try to develop in Castle. If you mix it around, you're going to find out that your results are going to be mixed up. Meaning loss, loss, win, win, loss, loss, win. It's going to look weird. It's going to be tough. It's going to be tough because you got to stick to something. you got to stay solid. Solid is defend. I mean, actually, like, develop first. Castle of the King and everything else from there. So good game from Arvega as he played from the Mumbai Movers here. And the Armenian Eagles get a draw in their match. Let's look at another two games. Actually, Go Pikachu. I haven't seen him in a while. He's usually in a stream too. He comes to the stream. So I saw Go Pikachu. So we chose this game. Go Pikachu was playing for, I think, the Eagles. Go Pikachu. Haven't seen you in a while. He lost both games to a higher rated opponent. So let's see how we can help him out. Go Pikachu, haven't seen you in a while. In this first game, Go Pikachu is playing black, playing the black pieces. His ELO, his rating now is 1579. The, his opponent is 1635. They had to play two games of 10 minutes with two second increment. And he played for the Eagles as his opponent played for the movers. So let's see what happened. This one is, oh my goodness, when the last time have you seen a 76 move game? That's a lot of moves, 76 moves. Well, let's check it out. He played black here. Flip the board. And he plays the French. So here we go. E4, E6. I, love, I used to love the French too. D4, D5. Oh, an exchange French. Okay. This is usually nothing you'd be afraid of here. Takes H3 and C5. So H3 at this point, I'm already like, this is not a move. I should be feeling really good right now. Because H3 is not a move. Like, why would you play H3? To stop Bishop G4? Like, it really is not. I don't even want to. Honestly, don't put my Bishop on G4 that much. French position me up. So this is just not a not that good. C5 could have been played. Also, after H3, they have the other one with C6. C6, Bishop D6, 97. Castle put the bishop on F5. So okay, H3, C5, C3. Nice C6. He's playing this a little different. Knight of three, knight of six, bishop e2, bishop e6. Castles. Bishop e7. You're just developing. Easy development. Now after this, we either have to we have a decision to make. Do we take it or do we lock it up? And he chose to lock it up. And bishop can't go anywhere. He has passive bishops. My bishops are passive, but I'm playing with the black pieces. So that's a little different. With the white pieces, this is even worse. Knight d2. Queen b6. Queen b6 makes sense, but it provokes b3, which is already good. Here's the thing you need to know, guys. When you lock up a center like this, you want to, or or any pawn chain, you need to keep the pawn chain. How do we do it? You have to ex expect and anticipate B3 is going to, to come here. There's always a rule like when they cross the line, meaning your half of the board, or vice versa. When you cross their half of the board, it's their job to get rid of it. So C4, I played C4, or no, not I played. Playing C4 here it will be, you know, you have to defend it afterwards. Thanks for the follow. Thanks so much, C. Kevin. So you got to go B5. If they go B3... I'll be going b5 easily. I mean, like just defending this. So it's all locked up. b3, a6, a4. Usually this happens where when they take, your rook's not able to get back. But you actually can take this. After castles, it can easily go into a position like this. Where after rook takes, queen takes, pawn takes, pawn takes. You see black's doing quite fine here. If not, I prefer black here. 
bishop is restricted again what are the minor pieces worst enemies the knights and the i mean the pawns the the pawns are the the worst enemies of the minor pieces this knight is restricted from the best squares this is called a redundant knight because this knight cannot go to the, like they, they do the same thing they can go to the same square this one is probably his best piece this one is mobile but it can't do nothing besides go this way because these pawns are blocked up it's very very rough i got an open file here open file here i got space for this bishop black's doing excellent excellent so that, that can, that's the idea if you're going to play this way. When you play a certain way, you have to know the ideas of the way that you play. So C4, if I play this, I need to know that I need to set up for B5 because B3 is going to happen. Or it should happen because that's the best move. If it does, if he doesn't do it, then I'm just he's just going to have a cramped position here. Cramped position. So let's see what happened. Pikachu lost his game. Playing with the black pieces. He's playing really good here. Queen B6, like I said, now it provokes B3. So now you can't solidify this, and this is actually attacked at this point. The c4 pawn is under attack because you can take it twice when I only defend it once, and I can't play b5 to defend it. Queen a6 looks absolutely ridiculously weird. And if I take this, then, I mean, that's kind of not what we wanted. Now he can get c4 in with almost tempo. His pawns look really good. I got one in the center. This is not what I wanted. This is not what I wanted. So queen b6, just to rethink that, maybe go somewhere else. b5, queen c7, anything else. Okay, rook b1, bishop f5, rook b2, and he takes it. He stole a pawn. It worked out. a4, go back, bring the queen back to civilization. We don't want to be over here just hanging out. Takes on c4. Wow. Wow. That's a sweet move. Dang, that's sweet. And you see, he's just highlighting the fact that the queen was in the wrong place. He should have went queen a3. Man, that was, I mean, look, queen a3 was, was the only way. I was like, well, you could go here, but queen b6, I guess, just seems fine. And it was. I mean, it was fine until you played knight takes c4. Bam! Oh, man, that would have messed out of, like, you didn't, you, you wasn't looking at that. It would shock you. Thought he jumped off the deep end when really he didn't. Because queen a3 wouldn't allow any of that because you just come back to d6. Takes and push. And queen c7, he gets one, I gets one. I think we grabbed a pawn out of that. But he did, he nabbed a pawn out of that. Now you have to get your king safe, ASAP. That was a good move. That was a good series of moves. Ouch, he got this pawn back. Thanks for the stream, gotta get going. Okay, C Calvin, thanks man, thanks for the follow and thanks for the positive energy, I'll see you later. Takes, takes, rook d8 castle finally he castled you gotta get this castle in guys this move 20 and he just castled you want to castle like by move 10 that's usually some of the best it depends on what's going on but the longer you wait the worse b6 bishop d3 queen c8 It's looking pretty good only fact yeah there you go you have to play active you have to play very active here this is pretty good blacks pieces three four five five pawns for white bis two bishops versus bishop knight and but he also has a weakness here but it can be defended hmm, i think it's about equal this is really about equal i just started playing one month ago and i'm hovering between 1100 and 1200 each has what are good beginner materials just watching streams um yes i mean watching stream might help watching streams youtube videos coaching i mean uh, any all sites playing like you, you're still new so when you're new you need to use everything a lot of times like everything because you, you gotta have the experience you're either gonna you're gonna have it one day anyway so get the experience of like doing everything playing knight d6 knight f5 whoa 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 how many times did we move this knight again i mean hey it's working, but he moved his knight so many times. One, two, three. <laughs> three in a way. So, okay, rook d1, knight h4, bishop g3, knight g6, bishop d7. Oh, that's a good move. Queen a6 only move. Oh, yeah, it's queen a8. But, I mean, queen a6 probably is a little bit better, so you can at least eye this square. This is the problems with bishops. You have to try to restrict the emotion, but this is an open game and you can't do so. 
His goal is to trade one of these, though. Oh, wait a second. That's hanging. Oh, my goodness. He, he missed it. Go Pikachu missed it. Oh, man. Black to move, guys. Black to move. This is why tactics win games. Dang. Mm-mm-mm. BC player says Queen X G3. Mr. Popezilla says Queen X G3. That's right, guys. On the spot, it is Queen takes G3. You just take it. You just take it. Queen takes G3. If he takes here to try to lure you into doing this, you just take on F2. If he goes King H1, is mate. It might be mate anyway, but let's see what happens. Check King here. You don't want to mess it up. So I'm just going to take this because it's material. But, I mean, you get the picture here. Queen takes G3. Straight up winning. But we got this far, though. Knight F5. Knight H4. Man, he's putting some work on him. Go Pikachu lost both these games, so he definitely went wrong somewhere. Or he might have gotten in tr time trouble because they'll get this is 10 minutes with two-second increment. 10 minutes, 2 second increment. So, bishop g4, queen f6. Oh, yeah, that trade probably wasn't the best. But did you have any other moves, though? Queen g5. These bishops are looking too good. Man, that's tough. That's tough. Trading off is just bad because of... of uh, oh, we got a bishop, but his, his pieces are active. Active pieces win games. Rook to c8 is really nice. Knight at five, rook d7, rook a8, and he jumped right off the deep end. Oh my goodness, deep end in the air. In the chat, he jumped right off. That's right. Yeah, he just hung a rook here, but he was playing really good. Really good up until he just dropped the rook. He might have been in time trouble, honestly. But he played really good up until then. Yeah, h3 was not a move again. c5, knight c6. You just keep developing. Keep developing like you should. Bishop e7. c4 was good. You got to play b5, though. You got to, like, lock this up. Ouch, there has been sealed. I know, man. It's, like, it sucks. You got to play b5. Make sure it's nice and solid. Queen b6 was just not a move. You have to understand what's going on in your position here, of course. And after even here, takes, takes. If you ever face a position like this, you know, understanding queen b6, I might, you know, that's going, that, you got to watch out for the tactics. But queen a3 was my first choice too, because I didn't want to step into any tactics or like rook b1s, but it's hard to find this. It's hard to find this, bro. It really is. It just takes experience over the board. Yeah, after this, white was just better. You got the two bishops and comp. That sucks. It's all good, though. Good game. And the second game. Same guy, go Pikachu. He played white against the same guy who was 1649. Okay, let's put this in. All right, go Pikachu play another one, another French man. But this was like he played white though, so they both played a French. That's funny. You and your opponent play the same thing for both sides, <laughs> right? e4 c5 knight f3 here we go we got a regular sicilian here c3 a delayed c3 i play the alipin or which is the regular c3 you just play c3 and d4 d5 e5 okay now this is like an advanced variation of the french and that's why they said this was a french this started as a, as a sicilian and this is a good thing to know guys it, as when you're playing white um this is kind of like a psychological thing when you're playing white and they play the sicilian and you get into a French position. The funny thing is, is that the, the player that plays a Sicilian is usually not as comfortable in a French position because they're playing the French now and not the Sicilian, which is, you know, different. You don't know who that person is. That person may be very, very good at both. Right. But I am not a fan of transposing into the French with white because I, I don't like the advanced variation. Not in the C3 Sicilian wise. It's just not tough. It's not easy. I think black gets a very good advantage 
or at least a very good idea of what to do quickly, easy moves to make in the advanced French. Thanks for the follow. Appreciate the follow. D5. Usually I'll take this, and then we'll go into this line right here. This is very similar to it. I mean, honestly, it's a different move order, but the same kind of moves from a regular C3 Sicilia that I play. After D4, you can take the pawns, play nice C3 kind of stuff, or they can go Bishop G4 right now, followed by Bishop E2, or even Knight F6 with Bishop E2. All the same stuff. Thanks for the follow. What happened though? So here, here. He played e5, e6, yep, and now we're in an advanced variation of the French. Knight e7, knight c3, knight f5, g4. g4 is an interesting move. He played a, a lash out immediately g4 move because the knight, he, this is annoying having his knight here. Eventually queen b6 is going to follow and it's going to like, you know, attack d4, b2 is hanging. Not fun. Not fun to play, I'll tell you that. So knight e7, bishop b5. Again, we're going back to moving a piece twice in the opening. Actually, it's not, you know, it doesn't feel uh, that good to make bishop b5. It, it feels like you even moved this bishop once already. Knight's supposed to go to h4 there, I think. That's correct, actually. Z Nation is right. The knight usually goes to h4 here. So that g4 move is not as good as it used to be. Knight takes, queen takes, and now we're kind of attacking this. This is still a little loose. Not fun. Knight e7, bishop b5, and usually if you play this as white, I'm going to let you know, the bishop will never, you should never put the bishop on, not never, but I mean there's like very rare cases where you put this bishop on b5 in the French. Very rare. Bishop d3 is usually the move, just in case he's casting over here, or you want to do threats with like knight g5. Sometimes I've sacked here before and the bishop helped me out with the attack. Bishop d3. So once he kicks you, he's going to have a bishop here. A6, are you really going to take this? You know, or are you going to back up and allow me to get another tempo? Like, I'm not a fan of that. So just play bishop d3. Bishop d7. Yeah, he just took it. He just took it. Thanks for the follow. He just took it. Bishop takes c6. Like, why? Why? There's no reason to. The best piece, anyone that plays e4, the best piece against the French, or the uh, best piece that you're, like, your number one piece is the light square bishop. I mean, honestly, in most e4 games, except when I'm playing a scotch gambit, that's different, but most e4 openings, the light square bishop is the strongest piece. Sometimes in d4 too, like a London system with bishop d3, or even a collie with the bishop on d3. Just aim it. Giving it up, now you have to play a different way. Knight takes c6, bishop to e3, bishop b4, a3 takes takes now look at this king safety wise i'm looking at this as a king safety standpoint right now too king safety black can be very safe on both sides actually May maybe not so safe on the queen side because rook b1 and stuff but he still can be slightly safe on the king side he can be very safe because i don't have any bishop to help me sacrifice over here so i'm gonna have to trust with like the knight and the pawns to do stuff that's really it where to learn what pieces are good against which openings? Which pieces are good to focus on, on taking and trading? Thanks, Z Nation. Thanks. Study pawn structure. That's pretty good. Pawn structures is right. C3, rook C8, rook B1. Okay, so we know he's not going this way. And then actually, go Pikachu play H4. Aggressive. King has to probably hide on G2 or maybe even safe on E1 if I can get King B2 in. But I got to be careful of this knight swinging in if I go King to D2. Canty, bro. Yo, what's up, man? What up, bro? How are you? What's going on, bro? And seven is says, what's up, Canty? Thanks for the five months, bro. Thanks for the five months. Appreciate it. Send it to me and um, let me actually look it up. I click on it right now. I'll click on it. I'll drag it over here. So let me see what this is. Keith. Okay, rank number one, 2101. Climbing up, bro. Climbing up, dog. 2191. Did you win this tournament? Points five. Looks like you won this tournament. Who'd you beat? 
It looked like you won it today. Did you win a tournament? What's the what's the performance rating on that? What's the performance? Sun King nine four four nine five four. Soldier playlist, we like it. That's gonna be for uh the next stream, which will be tonight. That will be when you come and you get the playlist. Oh, performance twenty six fifty eight. Oh wow. Twenty six fifty eight performance from beating oh you beat one, two, three, four. How many games did you play? Five games? And you won all five, you beat the twenty one ninety eight. Two nineteen hundreds, sixteen hundred, fifteen hundred. Good stuff, bro. Good stuff, big fella. Good job. Good job. That's what's up. And seven is thanks again for the five months, bro. Okay, so looking at this game as white playing. This was a French here. We're trying to see what White's actually going to do or how he's gonna finish up here. So rook here and let's see what happens. Thanks, brother. No problem. No problem, bro. Rook A1, knight B2. That's a s interesting move. Queen c2, knight c4, bishop g5. If This would be so nice if, lice, if white had a light square bishop. But because he doesn't, this is a big thing. This is a, a big thing. I'm going to throw some bits in my other account. Oh, thanks, bro. Appreciate it. Bishop g5, hitting the queen. I mean, I am not a fan of white's position. Black, I think black's better, actually. Now that I don't think about it, let me look at the eval. Yeah, black's better by almost two points here. Why? Because of the weakness. If you had a light square bishop, if you pick up a bishop and put it on d3, the evaluation changes. But because the bishop, the light square bishop is gone, this is bad. I mean, c3 is definitely a huge target. This knight's on an excellent outpost, and the only thing you're banking on is like if I, if I if I if this works, and that's a big if. You know, king is in the center. So the only thing I would try to be doing, let's see what he did. He played queen c7. So the only thing I would try to do is play here, here. If he plays g6, then I would go queen c1, queen f4, queen f6. But that's a long, how many moves was that? One, two, three, four, five moves. And he already looked like he about to take on c3. Looks scary. You play bishop to d2. You might have to go for it. Play h5. If he moves the knight, put the rook on c1. What if he even goes h6? Yeah, this is tough. You always got to have the plans. Okay, so bishop g5, queen c7, bishop d2, takes, king takes, bishop b5. That's a beautiful move. Beautiful move. Hey, big fella. What's up, Fadu? What up, big fella? Boy? Welcome to the stream. Queen to b2, queen there. Oh, yeah, that's a pawn. That's a piece. And that's out. Ouch. That is a wrap. This game went on so many moves. So many more moves. Let's see what happened. Okay, this is getting ridiculous here. What are you trying to do? Did you mate him with the king and rook? Okay, and then he did. So he made it him this way. It took a long time. 58 moves. That was a long game, especially after he won the piece and everything. It was still a long game. Okay, so that was two two games from Go Pikachu there. Go Pikachu played for, which team did he play for? The Armenian Eagles. So, if you missed it, this is the Pro Chess League Summer Series. This is round, I mean, this is uh, week seven. Week seven. So, whoa, one, two, three, 400 bits from Clay Bob. Thanks so much, man. There you go, big bro. Appreciate you, dog. Thanks for the love, man. 400 bits. Appreciate the love. So, Mumbai Movers and the Eagles played in the first round today. And they drew. They drew or the first match today. They drew 21-21. That was pretty cool stuff. And then in the second match, it was absolutely ridiculous. It was absolutely ridiculous with how many points the Moscow Wizards got. 79 and a half points for the Wizards. And then you have the Sao Paulo Calabaras with 28 and a half. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Yep, that's right. That's him. I've lost almost every game I finished, but not but one. That's okay. Uh, did you play? Did you actually play in this tournament today or this this match today for either team? If you play, we'll look at some of your games. You didn't play. Okay. 
Okay, this is Sephir91. We checked you out. Okay. Let's look at actually, what was this? Chess Jawa. I haven't seen you in a while. Chess Jawa. I didn't know it was going on. Yep. It's definitely going on. Chess Jawa played what color? I think he played over here. Yeah. Chess Jawa played for the movers. Man. And how did that match go? He won both games. Okay. Let's put this PGN in. So we're going to check out some games now or a game right here from the decisive matchup today the decisive matchup which was the capybaras versus the moscow wizards it was 28 and a half to 79.5 this game right here is chess jawa chess jawa is rated in this game that rating oh, I think I copied it already here it is okay chess Jawa is rated 1959 very strong actually and black is 1686 chess Jawa play white all right cool let's look at it e4 e5 another roy here it looks like close to it knight f3 knight c6 and here we go the classic the classic of the classics the roy lopez i used to love this i know many people in the chat do as well a6 bishop a4 knight f6 d3 still theory castle bishop c5 and castle take on c6 because he allowed him to this is a big thing you need to notice, guys, is a lot of times you need to put after castles or when this pawn is defended, you got to know that your pawns are going to be hanging. That's why bishop e7 and d6 is usually the moves. So after we castle, instead of casting, d6 makes more sense. So you get to defend this pawn. So there's no bishop takes c6, knight takes e5. That's going to happen every single time you allow it because I used to do it. <laughs> I used to do it for why I used to always want to take that pawn. So after castles, castles definitely take on c6, followed by taking on e5. And now I'm just up a pawn for nothing. Knight c3, bishop d4, knight f3, I'm out of the way. This is an easy win, I would say. And actually, bishop e3 is good, but what's a better move? When you find a good move, you look for a better one. So bishop e3 is actually a good one. Bishop to g5 is very strong because it keeps this pin here. Not like you can go knight d7. And this bishop is far away from home. On the other side of the board, hitting nothing but air, especially after I move my king out of the way. Very tough. Also threatening e5, forcing h6 and g5 to be a thing, which also I might be able to just sack like this. And now I got this pin again, threatening queen f3, so king g7 could be played, followed by e5. Boom! I am in here. We in here. The game is just over here. So really tough stuff. It's really bad. Bishop g5 was the move. Bishop e3 is cool. Bishop g5 was better. D4. Oh man, especially after c5. This is not even a piece anymore. Excellent game from Chess Jawa. Let's see what he did next. D4. Pawn takes. Bishop takes. He's trying to trade. And I recommend, guys, don't trade or don't try to trade your opponent's worst piece. Because as as much as this would be his his best piece, I mean, it's, it's actually his worst. This is his worst piece. And white acting like his it's his best. Like, oh, we got to get this bishop. When you should just leave this bishop alone. Let him sit over there forever. D4 takes. Bishop takes. C5 takes, takes. E5. Queen G6. And now black went from, like, losing to, like, doing really good. Make sure Kenji knows who supports him. But you should already know. Kenji sees everything. I do. I see everything. I see everything. Queen G6. Knight here. That's a good move. With 97 as a legit threat. 97 is GG. Game over. Uh, okay, he stops it. Then what do we do? B3. Bishop B7. C4. I like this. This is how you close them out. You immediately just close them out like this.
Locked him out. C4 is very nice. This bishop is not going literally anywhere. Rook e1, bishop here, queen d2, I'm out of the way. Put the rook here. Knight f4, I was expecting to see this. I was expecting to see this, but you do have to watch out. Bishops are so annoying. Bishops are absolutely so annoying. <laughs> when you don't have them. <laughs> Bishops are annoying when you don't have them. They're great when you do, but they're very annoying when you don't. Because knight f4 is like, oh, that's a good move. But I'm looking at this line here, queen h6. Where now, this is actually under attack due to bishop takes f3. So you might have to swing right back and do nothing. I mean, like, unless you're just going to let him take that. I don't know. Like, you just got to go right back. And but the bishops again, all hail the bishop here. That's right. Bishops are like, man, bro, so tough facing bishops. Queen d3. He did. Wow, this is crazy. This was a line. Actually, he 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 avoided queen traits. I thought black would just take it, but he is the one that avoided it. The thing that you want to avoid, they actually say this in Rhea Chess Your Chess from um, the fourth edition from Jeremy Selman. He talks about trying to have two knights. You want to try to stay away from having two knights. It's very hard to face to work with these and have the right chemistry when you got two knights. Two bishops, different story. Two knights, that's, that's tough. All right, and we got one of them gone. I would have easily taken this and probably not even thought twice just because I got pawns here. But Rook takes does actually just win this pawn. I feel like you're getting made it, but he's not. Rookie, yeah, rookie one. Man, that would have been scary. Knight f3, queen c1. Oh, man. And it's over. Is it because two bishops attack a line? White knights can only attack one piece. To, typically, unless you're an enemy bonus, unless you're for No, two bishops, they're because they're, they're faster pieces. A bishop can get to anywhere on the board, on an open board. The bishop can get to anywhere, any square it wants to, on an open board, on its own color, in two moves. So a white bishop, if it's a light square bishop, it can get to any light square on the board in two moves if you have, um, from the center of the board, of course, too. But if you have um, bishops, it's nice. It's mobility, correct. It's mobility. They're fast. They're stronger. They're long range. You know, knights are short range pieces. So having a short range piece in the end game sometimes isn't good. But sometimes it's an advantage because the knight can go forward, backward, sideways, back flipping. You know, all that stuff that knights do. It's not fun sometimes. Not fun. I actually lost the game in the World Open. I'm going to be covering that. It's round five, six, something like that. One of those rounds, um, I lost the game with a knight bishop in game because the knight was ridiculous. All the, all the moves. But it wasn't an open game, so it wasn't that open. It says a lot. When you got an open game, you want to have the bishops. Rookie five, take, take. Oh, that's a pawn. Something went wrong there. You had to have a better way to defend this. Bishop takes. Rook takes. He goes d6. Oh, yeah, because he can just take this back. Yeah, you probably should have just... Whoa, let's go back. Thanks for the 100 bits, man. Appreciate that. He says thanks. Thank you. Thanks for 100 bits. But, uh, Pawn Takes was probably better. And this was my first move anyway. I mean, this was what I was thinking. Like, just take this first. I thought this was better. It just looks better. These pawns behind the rooks, I mean, like, are in front of the rooks. Like, the rooks are behind these pawns. It's looking good. Knight g5 could be a threat. Hidden f7. What's up, Looney Toonsy? What's going on, bro? Welcome to the stream. Yo, yo. Yeah, knight g5 is just, just fine. Well, let's finish this up. What, what happened? Bishop c6. Queen d3. Take, take. Take, take. Rookie five. Take, take. Check. So what's the eval here? 3-6 versus 3-5. White is clearly up upon here. This is a win. This is a win. We just have to have some technique. Check. Make some fluff for the king. Or left. Make some fluff for the king. So king can run away if I need to. King g2. Queen c2. Giving him nothing. Giving him nothing at all. I think this check probably would have been worth it though. Oh, he can go bishop f8. So maybe not. 
Knight f3, that's a good move. Luft. Uh, yeah, you know what's funny? Luft is, is spelled that. And you know what? I hear so many people call it Luft. <laughs> like, all the time. They're like, oh, yeah, it makes them love. They always say it like it's nothing. <laughs> queen d3, g6, queen d5. Check. So now we got to push them. Pass pawns must be pushed. This one got to get pushed. And the reason why I say that is because you want to you want to stop everything he's threatening right now. Actually, I like this move because that's what G it stops G4. So we kind of control everything before we start pushing them. Trying to mate it. Knight G4 is a nice move. Tying down the queen here. Ooh, that's a good move. Now we got some uh, some tricks. Maybe even queen takes g5. Now that loses. <laughs> Maybe draws, but you don't want that. Knight here, really? You just kind of want to make something happen. Maybe put the queen here. Why here? Because I know that I, he can't stop me from putting a knight here. And actually, I might be able to come back around the back way and play g4 and set up a mating net. Oh, man, gay, this man some serious counterplay here. Oh, my goodness. You have to be careful about counterplay, guys. I always tell people, you can't, you cannot allow this much counterplay. Oh, he got made it. Whew. But that's uh, that was scary for a second. It was about to be checks and everything. That man was not playing. He came here with the checks. You got to be accurate with this. And this just comes with experience and more tactics. Experience, tactics, more playing, more analyzing. Experience, tactics, more playing more analyzing that's all it is that's all it is you played a nice little roy lopez here here's a trick to know guys especially you gotta play in the roy lopez if you don't defend the e5 pawn it's, it will be taken it will be taken so that's why d6 makes sense and that's why he did that's why he should have done it but unfortunately he just did not play the right move so good stuff there that was pretty awesome joanna try says hello thank you what's up how are you welcome to the stream this is the Pro Chess League Summer Series post game analysis, wrap up, coverage, all the good stuff from there. Again, Mumbai Movers, 21 points for them. Armenian Eagles, 21 points for them in today's live match. We analyzed some games from that one. Then we moved on to the Capybaras and the Moscow Whiskers, uh, Mo Whiskers, Moscow Wizards, 28 and a half to a phenomenal highest score we've ever seen, 79 and a half points for the wizards pretty cool stuff there and now after that today's standings actually are updated and we'll look at it right here this is what the standings look like for the pro chess league summer series as of right now these are the standings i'm good how are you thanks joining us right that's good i'm good i'm good life's good you know hey brought me fan because you help us improve our skills yeah man send me a message bro pushing tight it says dota that's right Go Minnesota Blizzard. Yes. Everybody has their teams. Make sure you play for your teams, guys. Sign up. You still got time. Still have time. Go and play for some of your teams. Mumbai Movers with six. First place. The Wizards and second with four. Copper Bears with two. Eagles got some work to do. So there's still a lot of time, and you guys make this happen. This is all about the fans, and you guys make this happen. If you are a big fan... And you're streaming some of your stuff. If you're a streamer or you're all active on Twitter and stuff like that, make sure you're you're on here. Make sure you hashtag Summer Series so you guys can win some money. Two hundred fifty dollars per group for the best fans. Group C is two hundred fifty bucks up for grabs. Annotate your games if you're playing. You know, share them, go on Twitter, everything like that. Again, here's the format: live club matches, ten minutes with two second increment, knockout battles included, and the playoffs. And now we look at the bracket. For right now, the bracket's looking like this with St. Ar St. Louis Archbishops. You got the Pandas, the Puffins, and the Bottom Bottom Snowballs are our guaranteed spots right now. As we now move into next week with the last few games of Group C and then Group D as well. So that's it, guys. Official standings one more time. This is what it looks like. We'll be back next week for the same coverage. So thank you so much for sticking around. If you're new to the stream, make sure you hit the follow button. Make sure you hit the follow button here. Thank you so much for hanging out so you can know when everything goes live. Check all the links in the chat from there. Great stream. Thanks, guys. I'll be streaming again tonight for my World Open Analysis Round 3. So I'll be streaming later tonight. From there, make sure you follow the socials here. 
socials, check the links in the chat for that stuff. And I shall see you guys later. I'm actually going to raid someone. Raid. We're going to go to Sub Saturdays. Yeah, let's go there. Sub Saturdays. Let's go RaidChess.com. Stick around for the Raid, guys. We're about to go RaidChess.com. Thank you so much for hanging out here. Make sure you hit the follow button and all that other stuff. And send me a message if you like. I'll hang out with you guys later tonight. Thank you so much for all the support today, the follows and subscriptions and everything else. About to go RaidChess.com. For Sub Saturdays.